Hello dear students I am Sonali Kulkarni I teach English and history in 9th and 10th standard in Utkarsh Vidyalaya English Medium Today we are going to discuss the first lesson of history historiography development in the west Hello dear children today we are going to start with historiography development in the west this is the first chapter in our history textbook so let us begin in this chapter we are going to cover the topics like uh, tradition of historiography modern historiography development of scientific perspective in europe and historiography and we are also going to discuss about the notable scholars who have contributed a lot in historiography so historical me research methods you can also call these as the objectives of historiography the important objectives were understanding the references regarding time and space of the given historical events and also various conceptual frameworks used in the historical research method understanding the references some new concept comes up what are the reference to that what is in uh, in connection to it that we have to understand or other that is to be understood and this should be in regarding or it should be in correspondence with the time and space of the given historical events so whatever historical event we are discussing about so the references should definitely be in regards with the time and space of that particular event and also various conceptual frameworks used in historical research methods so what were the frameworks what were the main pillars or what were the main ideas or concepts used for those historical research methods okay so the second point is for formulating hypothesis uh, children hypothesis means a supposed or proposed uh, explanation made on the basis of limited evidences as a starting point for the further investigation so if a uh, limited information is available and there is a uh, assume something and then we proceed in then that direction for the further investigation so that serves as the basic or the starting point of the further investigation so that is a formulating hypothesis also the next point is formulating relevant questions in view of the historical references so if they formulate the relevant questions so that uh, they get the direction in which they have to search the things or verify the things verify the evidences or gather the evidences or the rather the uh, things related or uh, material related to the particular concept the next point is collecting historical information highlighting the processes that lead to historical transition and carrying out comparative analysis so here collecting of historical information whatever information they as much as information they can gather on that particular concept is to be uh, collected then highlighting the processes that lead to historical transition also they ha they highlight the processes or the uh, historical transitions how one thing like the things or the concepts which were followed earlier kept on changing so the changes you can say of the uh, changes in the historical processes that are to be highlighted then carrying out comparative analysis also there has to be done comparisons between different things so that different concepts so that the uh, the concepts become more clear the next point is critically examining of various sources of history so whatever sources are available those have to be critically critically is thoroughly examined and then only they are to be expressed or made uh, public or they are to be revealed so for any concept or anything in history uh, it is very important that the critical examination of the sources of history are to be done very clearly very thoroughly and the last point contributing to this is examining relevant references of the available historical information so examining uh, whatever relevant exam or uh, relevant references are available for the historical information that have to be examined that have to be checked thoroughly that have to be very true very correct very genuine 
for so for their genuinity or for their uh, you can say for their ethicals or how uh, how true they are how correct they are for that it has to be examined very correctly whether it relates to the same uh, historical information or it belongs to which era it is written by whom all these things which are closely associated to it should be examined thoroughly so whatever information relating to the historical information which is available as the reference has to be examined or has to be checked thoroughly now historical research writing and studies are carried out with an objective of understanding the chronology children chronology means the order of the past events and their interconnections interconnections how they are connected to each other internally this is a continuous process so in a historical research whenever uh, things are wrote or studied they are carried out with the objective of understanding the order of the past events like which thing happened earlier after that what happened and after that what next happened all this order is to be studied and also their interconnection how the first event was related to the second or to the third or to the fourth incidents that has to be understood and incidences evidences and there are so many things which keep on continuously going on so history is or historical research is a continuous process because it continues it's never it never stops in the physical and natural sciences the empirical method that is the laboratory method of experiments and and observation is used to uh, verify the available knowledge this method allows formulating laws that remain true irrespective of the time and space those laws can be tested can be tested and proved repeatedly so in the physical and natural sciences there are uh, laboratory methods like the, which are called as the empirical methods means the laboratory methods that means we can carry out the experiments we can write, note down the observations and uh, this is used to prove our point like in algebra and geometry also we have things to prove our point like if x and y is this then that therefore this is this so we have a law or we have the knowledge Uh, is available to prove the point this method allows formulating of laws and because of this method laws can be formulated that those laws which remain true irrespective of the time and space so at any time and in any uh, at any place that laws remain the same or they remain true those laws can be tested and proved repeatedly again and again even if those experiments are carried out the uh, observations or the findings will be again the same they may not vary they do not vary so these laws can be tested uh, can be tested and proved repeatedly again and again they can be proved in historical research it may not be possible to use the method of laboratory experiments and observations this is so because we were not present in the historical time and space and the historical events cannot be recreated in the historical research uh, it may not be possible to use the method of laboratory experiments and observations this is so because we were not present in the historical time and space and the historical events cannot be recreated also in history it is not possible to formulate laws that remain true irrespective of the time and space so children here what is said is uh, that the when these historical events or when these uh, things actually took place that time we were not present there these are so old and this cannot be recreated or this these cannot be redone because the surrounding we can say that atmosphere the things in the environment the materials available and everything in the past cannot be recreated as it is now so there is a vast difference between the historical events like at the time of when these events happen and today's uh, situation so it cannot be recreated also it is not possible to formulate laws that remain true irrespective of the time and space because when we use the chemicals or when we use the um, algebraic or 
geometrical laws so when we talk about the algebraic the geometrical laws the physical laws or uh, laws in the physics i mean the chemistry the chemical equations and all these remain true irrespective of the time and space that means if they are carried out if the experiments are done today or if they are done 10 years later it if they are then uh, done in india if they are done in uh, in the US, in the in Russia, or anywhere in, in on any part of the earth, they will definitely remain the same. The results, the observations, will remain the same. But it is not so in case of history because, first of all, it is about the past, and the second thing is that all the environment cannot be of that time cannot be recreated. Okay. In the change in the time, we see so much of development and so much of changes in the history that it cannot be possible that what was correct 100 years earlier or what was applicable 100 years earlier is still applicable today or still the observations or the findings will be the same even today after 100 years or even after 1000 years. So there are a lot of changes. So it is not possible that the laws can be formulated in history and whatever laws are formulated that may or may not remain true at the time at a uh, different place and different time. To begin we need an expert to know the language and script of a historical document in order to read it and understand its meaning. Children earlier when these um, scripts were written in the which contribute to the uh, written sources of historiography these were written in a very different script the languages which we use today or the script which we use today were not the same that were used uh, that those were used so many years ago so first of all we need an expert to know who knows that language or that script which were used in the historical time so that he can read it out and understand what they wanted to say or what they have written also the experts can examine the authenticity that is the realness or the truthfulness or the correctness of the document by using criteria such as lettering style, author's style of writing, manufacturing date and type of paper, stamps of authorities etc. So children you can see that these are the things which are focused upon like uh, the uh, lettering styles the style of letters kept on changing during the years then the author's style of writing the style in which the author writes or every author has a different style of writing so that style is also very important manufacturing date and type of paper the paper used and when it when it was manufactured if the date is written on that that so uh, serves as a very good source of history revealing the timeline or revealing the era which it belongs to stamps of the authority so now when they were different rulers when they were different kings they had different uh, their own uh, can say sort of trademarks and so we, the stamps or the seals which were used by the kings also reveals about the authority or about the kings or about the uh, reveals more information about that particular evidence. Such a document is further scrutinized that is example, uh, examined or inspected thoroughly by a historian with the help of relevant historical references. So other uh, historical uh, references which are available or are uh, relieving the similar information those uh, references are also used for examining or scrutinizing the documents uh, of that particular uh, relevant references. Methods of various disciplines are useful in historical research for example archaeology. So these are the different methods which are used for the historical research. The uh, one of the methods is archaeology which is the study of human history and prehistory. Prehistory means uh, about the human's history and the history before it. Then the next is archival science that is the third that is the study and theory of building and curing uh, curating at archives. So archives uh, children are just like libraries but in libraries we have only books but in archives we have 
all the all the uh, uh, materials useful for the uh, useful in history or you can say all the information uh, can be references can be stones can be inscriptions can be coins so everything related to history are uh, stored in the archives so the study and theory of uh, building and curating archives manuscriptology means codicology the study of lit uh, the study and literature through the use of handwritten documents so basically we can see in so many of uh, uh, these uh, series or uh, movies you can see that they have to uh, the if it is uh, some uh, cid investigation or uh, some investigation in some uh, terrorist in activities or something this always we hear that the messages which are given from uh, one person to another are decoded so they are in a coded form they are in a different uh, terminologies and then they are decoded that is they are their uh, way of saying or their or rather the words used are um, what do they exactly mean they do not mean what they are said so what do they mean all that is uh, all that study is called as manuscriptology it can be also the use of handwritten documents then the next uh, method is epigraphy that is the study of inscriptions uh, children there in the olden times when there was uh, less use of paper or rather no use of paper there were things inscribed inscribed means carved or written on the stone walls pillars or uh, metal coins so this uh, these things which were inscribed are known as the study of that inscriptions is known as epigraphy analysis of lettering style linguistic linguistic is the language used numastic that is the study of coins and genealogy that is the study of lineage lineage in the sen sense who was the son of uh, which king after that king who ruled his son or his uh, uh, brother's son or whoever or his younger brother who ruled so that lineage or the chronology you can say let us see the tradition of historiography We've, we have learnt about the historical research method, critically examining the historical sources and writing the historical narrative. The writing of critical historical narrative is known as historiography. Children, uh, we have seen that what uh, whatever uh, sources are available, those have to be first uh, checked properly, and then when the, we are when the historians were. sure when the peop when the person who was investigating that was sure about its correctness about its truthfulness and its connection with that particular topic when he when after doing all these um, processes when he used to uh, write his uh, findings the about the history those are called as the historical narratives and such uh, writings of historical narratives which are after critically examining them so these type of narratives are known as is known as historiography and the scholar and the person the learned person in that particular field when he the person who writes that is known as uh, a historian so a scholar who writes such a narrative after critically examining uh, all the references and all the sources that narrative written by that scholar is that scholar is known as a historian the historian cannot include every past event in his narrative so whatever he is writing in that he cannot uh, include each and every detail that he comes across the inclusion and interpretation of historical events by the historian often depends on the conceptual framework now the conceptual framework means the way i uh, the ideas are organized to achieve a research pro projects or purpose uh, so we can say that um, what if there are so much of uh, for example we can say that there are 10 points which a historian has 
come across during his investigations or rather during his um, findings or whatever relevant material he has from that he has come across 10 um, things we can say so those all 10 things might he might not feel them all to be contributing equally or all those things should be included in that narrative so it is upon his um, way of thinking or his ideology or his way of organizing things that he may find only eight out of them to be more important which are more connected or which are more closely associated with the event and so he may include only those eight points and leave away the two points so it entirely depends upon what is his conceptual framework or what is his idea about that particular thing and then he uh, accordingly he chooses his framework or his I, he uh, organizes his ideas his style of writing is determined by the by that conceptual works so his uh, idea or what his style of writing is is decided because of that conceptual framework or that is the his way uh, the way his ideas are organized to achieve that research uh, so children when we uh, see something look like for example if we go and watch a movie when we come back we meet a friend and that friend says uh, what was about in this uh, movie so do we really tell him each we, do we really tell our friend the each and every word and dialogue no we just summarize it or we just whatever things we find important or whatever things we find very touchy or which have uh, you know had some impact on us those things we include in the story similarly it depends upon the historian which all points he feels important he includes all those points so the conceptual framework means you can say the summary summary or the important things which are incorporated in that particular um, writing the tradition of writing historical narrative that is historiography is not was not prevalent in the ancient societies of the world however that that does not mean that they were not aware of the historical time and were not eager to know about it ancient people also feel also felt the need of passing on the stories of the life and valor of their ancestors to the next generation uh, children earlier there was no written method so uh, it there were no writings there was uh, the skills of writing were not developed so is that that during those era or during those times the uh, people were not uh, really proud of the of their ancestors or proud about about their achievements or whatever they have done they were definitely they were but only the things were that they were not noted down in the way uh, they are noted down now or rather in the later part of the history but they were definitely or definitely no, no, felt that the uh, valor that is the life and the valor valor means the great courage which their ancestors had and which they had uh, used or which they have presented as and when the time demanded so they also felt that they these stories or uh, these great deeds should be passed on to the next generation so what they did ancient communities all over the world used various means like cave paintings storytelling singing songs and ballads etc for this purpose so what they did since the uh, writing was uh, not in practice then so they used to carve on the uh, carve paintings uh, they used to tell stories to the next generations they used to do cave paintings the stories entire stories were narrated in the form of paintings on, on in the caves they used to sing songs of the great deeds and they also used to pass on in the form of ballads these traditional means are looked upon as the sources of history in the modern historiography so these all these sources are all these activities like cave painting storytelling singing songs and ballads are looked upon as the sources of history in the modern historiography because this deals or this is more related towards the ancient historiography now that was all about the ancient historiography uh, we will move ahead to modern historiography.
so how the modern historiography was different from that of the ancient historiography there were four main characteristics of modern historiography its method is based on scientific principles it begins with the formation of relevant questions so in modern historiography it was more focused or it was more mainly based on the scientific principles it began with the formulation of relevant questions so relevant questions were formed and while getting answers to those questions that is how historiography was written these questions are anthropocentric means it means that these questions are about the deeds of the members of the ancient human societies of a particular period history does not set suggest any interrelation between the divine that is relating to god especially the super being and human deeds so we have seen in the first point that it began with it begins with the formulation of questions relevant questions now what type of questions were formulated these questions were anthropocentric and anthropocentric means that these questions were about the deeds of the members of the ancient human societies of a particular period so history does not suggest on interrelation between the divine so it does not suggest any relationship between the divine divine means means uh, like godly things or uh, the sup- whatever we should do for the supreme being like you to be more precise it does not suggest that what you should do it only shows the what was it just reveals on what was done so it only uh, reveals the human deeds it should not be like uh, you should be more truthful or what you should be that is not suggested in history what all is uh, suggested is only or what all is revealed is only the human deeds whatever the uh, ancestors have done that is revealed in in history answers to these questions are supported by reliable evidence so now whatever these uh, questions are formulated these answers the answers to these questions are supported by re- reliable evidence so whatever questions are formulated the answers are definitely supported or the answers are in the form of reliable evidences whatever evidences the historians gets those reliable evidences are the answers to these questions which they have formulated history represents a graph of mankind's journey with the help of past human deeds so it uh, depends the characteristic of modern historiography is that history represents a graph of mankind's journey with the help of past human deeds so if you see that the uh, like we can say that the corona pandemic is uh, is in like it, we are all always discussing about the corona and uh, the effects of it because that is the main reason why we are stuck up into our houses and we have begin with the online lectures so when we also study this when we study this corona or when we study this pandemic also we try to compare that when it started how many people used to test positive how many used to get cured and what was the death rate so it is a comparison from the beginning to the till today so that is uh, represent in the, represented in the fro- form of a graph which gives us a clear idea that what was the transition or how it has increased or how it has decreased or how it has been remaining stable so history represents uh, a graph of mankind's journey so there it was the pandemic the corona virus but here we are dip, uh, discussing about historiography and therefore he uh, it is said that the modern historiography represents a graph of mankind's journey with the help of the past human deeds so in the past what were the human deeds and in today's world it kept on changing and what were the changes and after the changes what is uh, the graph or what is the graphical representation of the man's journey mankind's journey it is said that modern historiography with above characteristics has its roots in the ancient greek historical writings 
history is originally a Greek term. Herodotus, the Greek historian of the 5th century BCE, used it first for his book entitled The Histories. So children, it is said that the modern historiography is about the characteristics. Um, it's based on the characters and these characteristics has uh, its roots in the Greek, ancient Greek history, old, very, very old Greek historical writings. So history was originally a Greek term and Herodotus, the Greek historian of the 5th century BCE used it first for the for his book. So the term history was uh, first used by Herodotus in the 5th century BCE for his book which was entitled or which was given the name the histories development of scientific perspectives in Europe and historiography. Till the 18th century CE, Europe had achieved a remarkable progress in the field of philosophy and science. Scholars by then had come to believe in the possibility of studying the social and historical truths by applying scientific methods. Now the philosophical discussions focused more and more on the objectivity of hist objectivity in history and historiography. Uh, so children, as there was a progress as the time moved ahead, there were, uh, there were a lot of uh, development and there were remarkable progress in the field of psychology and science, philosophy and science as well. So uh, the scholars by this time, by the, by this time had, by the 18th century had come to believe that the possibility of studying the social and the historical truth by applying scientific methods. So now uh, in the beginning we saw that it was anthropocentric, it was very different than the sciences. So here with in the 18th till the 18th century CE we, they had started, the historians have started believing that they can apply scientific methods to in, in studying the social and the historical truths. Now the philosophical discussions focused more and more on the objectivity in history and historiography. So the objective in history and historiography was uh, the philosophical discussion or the, philo the philosophical discussion focused more on the objectivity and uh, in history and historiography. Prior to the 18th century, all, Euro all European universities were interested only in the philosophical discourses re revolving around divine phenomena. So prior to the 18th century, uh, the European uh, universities were interested only in the philosophical discourses re uh, revolving around divine phenomena. So it was more focused or it was more uh, focusing on the uh, divine phenomena means the God or the super power sort of thing. However, gradually this scenario, scenario began to change and in 1837 CE, the Gottingen University was founded in Germany. This university for the first time had an independent department of history. Gradually, as there was development in the field of history as well, so in 19, oh sorry, in, in 1737 CE, the Gottingen University was founded, and this university for the first time had a separate department, independent department of history. Later, other uni German universities also became centers of historical studies. So later on, there were other uh, German universities also wherein um, they became the centers of the historical studies that is historical studies were given a lot of importance.